In the face of rampant lawlessness unfolding across our nation, we find ourselves confronting the erosion of fundamental principles of right and wrong. The very fabric of our societal foundations is unraveling, presenting a disconcerting spectacle before our eyes. So you may ask the question, what can we do about it? David in Psalm 11 asked the very same question like this. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? For lo, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow upon the string, that they may privily shoot at the upright in heart. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His eyelids try the children of men. The Lord trieth the righteous. But the wicked in him that loveth violence his soul hateth. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone, and an horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness, his countenance doth behold the upright. The foundations are crumbling, that's clear. It's crucial to recognize that there is a God in heaven who observes all the deeds of both the wicked and the righteous. His control extends over everything, and in due time he will rectify all injustices. Our role in this tumultuous journey is a continuous commitment to prayer. As Jesus firmly stated, men ought always to pray and not faint. Reflecting on the story of the unjust judge, and the persistent woman seeking justice. Jesus overtly said that if such a wicked, godless judge could relent to her request, how much more would God swiftly avenge his own? And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. The future of our country remains uncertain, and I, like many, am uncertain about the Lord's will. However, my prayer has been consistent over the years. If the path of our nation involves facing consequences for its wickedness or fulfilling end times prophecy, then so be it. On the other hand, if there is an alternative course, may the wicked and lawless individuals find themselves unwittingly constructing their own gallows reminiscent of the fate of wicked Haman, as he falsely accuses and plots to have Mordecai and the Jews destroyed. And he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had showed him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. So after his plot was discovered by the king, this is what happened. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. At last justice prevailed as Haman met his fate on the very gallows he had erected for Mordecai. It was a turning point in the tale, a moment when the king's wrath found resolution. With all the wickedness and lawlessness we see in our country, pray that these wicked people, like Haman, would be in the process of building their own gallows. Here's another question to ask. Would the Lord spare our country for the few righteous people in it, in spite of the wicked? Consider Sodom. Then Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of the 50 righteous people in it? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. In conclusion, let our prayer be unwavering. Let us pray continually, never losing heart 
that the Lord will swiftly bring about justice, imploring that those engaged in wicked deeds find themselves facing the consequences, much like the fate of Haman. Above all, let us beseech the Lord for mercy upon the righteous inhabitants of our land, as in Sodom. And lastly, aligning our prayers with his holy will and divine purposes.